feeling right, sir? Just like new, Dak. How about you? Right now, I feel like I could take on the whole empire myself. I know what you mean. Echo Station 3T8. We have spotted Imperial Walker. Imperial Walker from the North Bridge. <laughs> where your ship learned to communicate, but it has the most peculiar dialect. I believe, sir, it says that the power coupling on the negative axis has been polarized. I'm afraid you'll have to replace it. Well, of course I'll have to replace it. Here, little Chewy. I think I better replace the negative power coupling. I'm only trying to help. Would you please stop calling me that? The Force is with you, young Skywalker. But you are not a Jedi yet. Call this show business, uh, Mark. You were hanging from a cave. You uh, uh, sealed in a water tank, suspended upside down in, in this cave, and s swimming with snakes. I mean, the special training that the two of you must have to go through to do a film like *Empire Strikes Back*. What do you, you know? Well, they don't train you to work with serpents at drama school. That's for sure. But you had, didn't you, have to go through some kind of vigorous physical training? Well, yeah, to get ready for what they wanted me to do. I took some classes, mostly for movement in, you know, karate and kendo, which is Japanese sword play. I did a little bit of weight lifting, which is one of, <laughs> probably my least favorite of all. <laughs> I get the feeling that both of these characters are more fully dimensional this time than yeah, they well, were the Yeah, well, if you hadn't had the first film in which they were introduced and you learned just a little bit about them, you wouldn't be able to... Uh, to, uh, to complicate the relationships in the second one and to learn more about them. Really, the second film is more like a second act. Uh, it is, isn't it? It's the yeah. second of the first, of, there are three trilogies, right, that will yeah. be... Well, they're, they're, George had always envisioned this story in, in, in a six hour, in six hours, in three two hour uh, sections. And uh, so this one follows naturally from the first film. Do you both think that you'll be, Mark, will you be Luke Skywalker, and Harrison, will you be Han Solo throughout the whole series? 
Do you think it'll, it'll have that kind of a well, life? I'm, no, the thing is, they go back after this trilogy and do 20 years earlier, young Alec Guinness and young Darth Vader, and of course our characters would be just children oh, in I that see. one. But Yours might. Mine would be about 20 years old. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> You know, that brings up a point, Harrison. I wonder if there are people that say to you that, uh, that this, this whole Star Wars business brought you overnight success. You have been in this business for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, it did bring me overnight success, but it was a very long night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really was. You went out to California from Chicago in 1963. Yeah, I was 15 years in the business before uh, Star Wars came along. Was, do you think your association with, um, with Francis Ford Coppola, when you went first to meet him and you met Lucas, and uh, do you think that well, was... I worked for Lucas before I ever met Coppola, actually. I did American Graffiti for Lucas. Yes. And was that kind of the turning point for you? Uh, in your career? Well, it, it looks now as if my introduction to George Lucas is would certainly be a turning point in my career. But at the time, it didn't seem like a turning point. It seemed like a good job. Mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, you had a cameo feature in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. You've been associated with some really fine, visual, exciting works recently, haven't you? I've I mean, been be real lucky. Yeah, you really have. You live in California. I do. Right? And you have two careers. You're also a carpenter. <laughs> I used to be a carpenter. He I, made this chair. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I, that's what I did uh, in between uh, acting jobs at one point. Uh, so I didn't have to do the same job over and over again. And thus uh, diminish people in the business enthusiasm for me. I thought that would, I'd try and find another way of making money. And I determined to be a carpenter. It's still creative though, you know? It seems to fit, kind of. Mark, tell me, maybe both of you could chime in on this. I'd love to know what it's like to be a, a, out in Hollywood and that kind of young person in this business, that syndrome. You know, the 20-year-old kind of working. It, there's so much of that now, and it's wonderful. There seems to be a lot of work for young people. How is it? Um, really, the, um, my experience is in television, you see. Mm -hmm. And this new breed, I think, that you're referring to, the Lucases and that sort of thing, uh, Really, my involvement with, with uh, well, I guess, no, Cor Corbett Summer, the two guys that wrote Sugarland Express, did a movie, Hal Barwood and Matthew Robbins. Uh, it's exciting because they're true filmmakers and they, they really want to make good movies, period. And it doesn't. And most, most of them also br are <coughs> projects that they bring t uh, to the screen, are self generated projects. They come up with the script, Right. they are going to produce or direct it, and they take it to the studio. Rather than being third or fourth right. hand. So it's not like as if uh, there was a, a, a shopping list made up of people who are currently uh, attractive in the industry, and, and the deal's put together, and, uh, and the result is a movie. Uh, it's a different process with them. Of course, the, even the in this film. The movie is the thing to start with. Sure, and in this film it impressed me that, uh, that Lucas put his, the whole corporation, everything together under one kind of independent heading, didn't he? So he wouldn't have any problems because, for instance, with Star Wars, I read that at the end there was really not enough in the budget to complete the special effects. They had one shot completed, um, the special effects, when Alan Ladd saw it, and that was the day where they, did, they decided whether they would go ahead. Four and a half million dollars had been spent already. So the live action had all been finished. No score had been written. They played different pieces of classical music for it. But, uh, but this time, the chance was taken by one person head on. And it's, it's, how do you feel, both of you, when you finally see this as a completed work? Because obviously, when you shoot it, you do it in pieces. And, and then the effects are put together. I mean, it must be quite a feeling. It's hard. To see it, it reminds all. me of doing children's theater. But the response comes three years later. <laughs> You know? Yeah. I mean, you really have that feeling when you're doing it. You, you, you've been shown the drawings, and they've been they're very open about what you never are asked to blindly look at a piece of tape and <gasps> do that. Okay. And then they tell you what you're going to see. And we've become so, we've gotten sort of a crash course in, in uh, special effects over the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. Uh, but really, to see it in the theater, all cut together with the music and the audience response, is a wonderful, it's an exhilaration. But you're, you're curiously removed 
because you, your, your involvement with it had ended over a year ago. Do you both realize what heroes you are to young people in America? Do you? Through these roles? Well, I mean, you're reminded in, in different ways, and you, you have to, I mean, I must say there were kids waiting for me outside the hotel, mm -hmm. and this was their, for them, that three or four minutes that I spent with them. I mean, they probably got up in Brooklyn this morning at 6.30 and got their lunch packed, and it was a, yeah, it's... Well, the reason I think it's so special is because I think that young people need heroes today. There's so few places where they can go and actually find someone that holds up personally, yeah. privately, and on the screen. You know, well, and I, I think, think it's important. I think that's why these films are as successful as they are. I think it's the most potent mythology around. It's probably, it's the only fairy tale I know that's being, that's being generated for, for children now. And I think they appreciate it. I think they, I think that's why they're, you can have a hero. It's very hard to have a hero in, in a film these days. I think the reason we're heroes is because we're in the environment that we're in. I think so too. I don't mean to exclude adults either. I think that that's what makes it special. It's a family kind of excitement. But for what everyone. he's saying, the environment is important because you can be a hero to a certain segment of the population and, and not to the others if you are, say, a policeman busting. Mm -hmm. Uh, dope dealers in the park, you see. But it's, um, I think George realized that need for uh, unadulterated and pure heroes. Well, that's wonderful. I encourage everybody to see this movie. Thanks, Mark Hamill, Thank Harrison you. Ford. Nice Thank to you. talk to both of you.